What's up guys, welcome back to our new channel. I hope you're enjoying it thus far. And today we're gonna be having a look at the Pro Builder and also the Pro Grid package. They're quite fun. Uh, yeah, they're actually quite fun. I actually go and use that now before I use 3DS Max or Maya. So, what we're gonna be doing is quite simple. We're gonna be grabbing the package, gonna be playing around with most of the tools in there. Also, this might or might not be the third video recorded in a row. Um, I'm getting ahead a little bit, I need that. So yeah, as I mentioned, I actually use that now before using 3ds Max. So I make my mesh, I make my old collision mesh inside of Unity with Pro Builder, and it's very, very simple. And then I export that over to 3ds Max. And then on top of the collision mesh, I usually build something nice to the best of my abilities. Uh, and that would be the art. And then my collision mesh, that was my Pro Builder, I turn the mesh render off and it just acts as collision. So yeah, let's get into it. Getting started with Pro Builder is very easy. You just go under Window, Package Manager, and you find it directly in the list. Now, if you don't see all this list, all everything I'm seeing right now, make sure you go under Advanced and Show Preview Package. It's something that I forgot to mention in the last video, but uh, here it is. You gotta make sure you show the preview package because sometime the package we're using are not being released yet. Now, I'll not only install Pro Builder, I'll also install ProGrid, so I have perfect snapping, and I recommend you do the same. It's very easy to set up, and we'll go over it in less than a minute, actually. And you'll see that ProGrid is much faster to install. So once that is completed, we're going to go in our scene, and we'll see a couple of changes. So we'll see a different type of grid. Now, if at any time you don't want to see it, you can uh, control that at the top left side over here. So you can turn the grid line off in case you're working and you don't want to see it. Um, turn them back on. If you want to see it on the other axis, like right now it's on the Z axis, but you want to be working with the floor. The floor is Y, of course, and you can also see a 3D grid. Now, what exactly does this do with the Pro Builder? It means that every time you're moving something, it is going to snap to the grid, as you can see over here. And I find it very, very useful um, to play stuff <laughs> more accurately. So here we go. Now, um, if you don't want to see any of that, turn it off. And you can also close this and it's going to hide at the top there and it's no longer actually yes it is still going to snap so you can turn that off over here you're going to see there's also tooltip that let you know what it does so we're back to normal but as i mentioned i want to see my grid and i want to move my stuff around um, once it is completed i don't really need to see it anymore so i can close it off oh quickly the unit you see on the floor is one meter each if you want to have smaller than that you can of course change it say 0 0.5 and now it's going to create a smaller grid so that was it for pro grid very very simple um, and very fast now to open up the pro builder you're going to go under tools at the top find pro builder and open up the pro builder window all the options you see down here are available in the window i do recommend you put the window somewhere over here and you can start playing around with it now um, let's have a look at what this is you have a couple of options you see all the options you can actually play around with right now there's also another way to see them. If you right click, you can go in icon mode. Sometimes people like that a little bit better. Um, at first, I liked the text more because I didn't know exactly what they were doing, but it's up for you to decide. Let's start with the text mode so we can actually see what it does. The first one is new shape. Let's click on it. You're going to see that a new shape appears. What's this shape? It's a cube right now. Not very interesting. I'm going to remove it. If you click on the plus sign, however, you get a window that lets you know, hey, it could be a cube or it could be a sprite, a prism, stare uh, and it gives you settings for it as well so you're like in 3ds max with the default the default object you can create uh, and they give you settings for for you to create it even better like something like that now this looks like the fire temple in a car enough time somehow okay cylinder um door door is very useful for me i use it all the time actually and there's a couple more you can explore basically it just creates a shape and, and that's what you want to be using. Um, I'll use in the plane quite a lot, making no subdivision. So remove the segment and I build. Once you press build, it appears in your scene and now you have your pro builder object. Um, you can have more than one. There's nothing stopping you from having more than one. You'll see it in a in moment, but we're going to have one and look at what it does. So if you select your object, you're going to realize that you have a couple of options spawning at the top here. You can either select the whole object like we're doing right now. You can select vertices. So as you can see over here, they're really hard to see actually. Um, you have vertices that you can pull 
and modify in real time and it's actually going to change the uv as well so that is very very useful very very cool um yeah you can play around with that you can modify where it is going to be of course if you have pro grid things can look quite good very very fast you can make sure you you do your things properly with pro grid um, and, and space out your vertices properly now you can also select the edges so just like in 3ds max or any other 3d software you can grab an edge just like this move it up move it down you can grab multiple edge do the exact same thing and in case you want to grab like say these two and these two you can hold control while you're selecting and you'll see that it'll bring it will bring everything back up um, like so next up we have the faces so we have four faces over here same concept up down move them around now the most important thing that i think pro builder has is the extrude extrude is very very fun let's have a look at what you can do with extrude assuming i want this to be a little bit more elevated i can do this but it also messes up my edges over there i don't want that if i hold shift and i go up i'm actually extruding phases like so and it's much better it's you know i've created additional phases yeah but at least um at least it didn't mess up the rest so that is quite nice uh extruding is my favorite thing you can also do it with edges so in case you want to extrude a wall you can grab all of these like so and extrude up oh i missed one actually i missed two <laughs> okay and you can extrude up so that is fairly fairly nice of course you see through it because of the back face cooling but that is super cool now if i made a mistake and i don't want to see a certain face like say over down here um, I can select that face and I can click on remove. Now remove is all the way down at the bottom over here. Um, you'll see delete face. You can also detach that face in case you don't want it to be with the other one. You can just pull it out. Um, but in our case, we want to delete. Now I don't expect you to go all the way down all the time if you have faces to delete. What you can also do is press on not delete, but backspace. That's very important. If you do delete, you're deleting the whole object. Um, you want to do backspace to remove a certain face. Now you have a lot of other options you can look at. If we just quickly have a glance, um, you'll see things such as subdivide. So you can create more division of your mesh. As you can see, we just made a lot more faces. We can uh, flip the normals. So if something is backward, you can always flip the normal and you'll see it from the other side now. If we go beneath our stage, we'll see it like that. Um, the mesh stays the same, however, what you see visually is of course upside down you can mirror object just like so you also have settings if you want to mirror on the other axis you can also decide to duplicate so we can make a whole level like this oh that's actually not the right anchor but you get the point so we can make a whole level like this just by flipping and there we go it's definitely all wrong. But you know what's cool with this is uh, you're actually able to edit it quite easily. So if you're just playing around with your game, if you're doing something else completely, you come back to it, you can come here and say, hey, I don't wanna have this face anymore. Not this one either, not this one either. Okay, let's switch to the other object. Let's remove some faces. You can work with it very, very fast. And that is, what is the best thing about this tool, to be honest? And just like that, I fixed most of the mess I've made. Of course, it's not perfect, but hey, we got our small arena over here. And oh, I forgot a wall over here. I left the wall down, so let's grab it. Grab the edge and put it up. And here we go. So it was very, very simple to do something like this. And it's even more simple if you have an idea of what you're doing. So I encourage you to have a good look at that. It's, I love it. It's actually a lot better than um, having to, well, for my specific flow, it's a lot better than going into the S Max, making my stuff and then importing it. Uh, that takes usually a while. But speaking of which, if you do want to use a 3D software like 3ds Max, like Maya, what you can do is actually have your object and say, hey, okay, I've made a base mesh over here. I have the general look of, on how it feels or even better, I've made my whole collision mesh. Let's export this and build art around it. You can, you just select it and press on export. Um, it exports as a OBJ, I believe, but you can also change it to these, which I'm not sure what they are, but OBJ will do the job for you. You can also export colors and, and that kind of stuff. So that is extremely nice. So another thing that is really cool to look at is we can actually set colors for say walls. 
In case I want my walls to be green, I can go ahead and select them. So I'll select like these three for testing. And then under vertex color, you have this nice palette so you can apply it. You say, okay, walls are going to be pink. You go over here, you do the same thing. And walls are going to be pink. And since I can't really see my floor, well, let's put some color on it. So this side is going to be the cyan side and this side is going to be the red side or orange. Uh, yeah, you can play around with that and, and have something working really fast. Now, if you zoom in closely, you'll see that there is actually a material on top of that, which means that this material, well, it could be yours. You could have scaling texture on there. You could have a seamless texture. And as you can see, it's right here. So if you go under material editor, you'll be able to apply your own material. Now, I don't think I have any right now, so let's just make one for, for fun. Let's just make one that's not going to look nice, but hey, at least you know what I'm trying to get at. So I found myself a seamless texture of lava online, and I'm just going to apply it just for, just for the sake of seeing what it does. So I went ahead, made myself a material, as you could see, and I'm drag and dropping this thing right here. Now we're gonna go and select those faces, Alt 2 to apply. We can do it through a keybind, or we can just do it like so, whoops. Wrong face. So I'm going to use a keybind so I can go fast. There we go. Now we got lava. It is our own material. It could use a little bit of love right now so we could have more. Oh, no, I mean less. <laughs> less styling. And here we go. It already looks like something. You could have that directly in your game. All right, so let's wrap up this video with two things, the new poly shape and also the smoothing. So I click on new poly shape. And as you could see, what happened is that we got a new object right away, but really nothing happened, seems to happen at least. Now, if I go in the scene and I start clicking, you will see that I'm leaving waypoint just like that. And let's go ahead and do something like so. And ta-da, I got myself a wall that I've made custom to some extent. Um, that's not really a wall. Well, you get the whole gist of it and it's not even straight. So let's go ahead and fix that. Oh, by the way, to cancel it off, you have to press on something. I forgot what the keybind is. Oh, there it is. So hit enter. So when I press enter, I have this result over here. Now it's not super clean. As you can see, I messed up over here. So I chose my vertex under the vertice mode and I have deleted it with backspace. Now, another important thing to do is to fix this because I did it wrong. Let me drag those three over there. Okay, maybe you pull this up. So we have this kind of wall. Now, one thing I wanna show you guys as well before we end this up is the smoothing group. So this was much bigger deal back in the days when you didn't have much polygon to, to make a shape. But as you can see over here, we can clearly see the scene. Like I'd like to fake this and, and have it be kind of round. Well, for that to happen, we can put them on, this main, on the same um, smoothing group. So I'll be selecting all those face, go under smoothing, and let's put that on one. Now, if we go back, you don't actually see the seam as much as before. You can see it if you go directly here, of course, but it looks much more smooth, much more circle, and that's a smoothing group. Now, if you want to make two edge um, look like they're not connected, you can also do the same thing by separating them. So this one's going to be on, say, one, and this one will be on two. And you'll be able to see it much clearly now that those are not connected. Well, you also see it here because that's a two, that's a one, and also that's a one. So if you go the other way around. So yeah, this one is much easier on the eyes than this one. This one looks more rough, but that's because they're not on the same smoothing group. And that's where we're going to end our Pro Builder tutorial. Thank you so much for watching once again. Today we don't have enough work to put that in a package, but that's just fine because you know, we, we have very little done. We just looked at the tool today. So you can go ahead and grab the Pro Builder package, make your own awesome mesh, and maybe share it on Discord. We have a lot of people now on Discord. Let's see. There is about 95 people online right now. And uh, yeah, it's actually doing quite great. So having that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.